All right, today we are gonna tie Tim Borski's haystack fly. Uh, it is a very great fly for tarpon fishing or snook fishing or any other large predatory fish in a backcountry situation. You could also tie it in really light colors and use it a uh, beachfront coastal for migratory tarpon also. Uh, we're tying this one though in black and purple for uh, backcountry applications. The hook that I'm using today is gonna be a 2.0 Gamakatsu SL12S. Uh, you can tie it on a 1.0, same hook. Uh, you tie it on a Gamakatsu SC15. If you wanted to tie it on a small hook and still maintain a really strong hook, an owner uh, Aki 1.0 or a number one is also a pretty good hook for this too. But uh, I do like to tie it on a big game style fly. I intend to throw this fly at a larger fish. Uh, and I want a little bit of shank to the hook, but not a long shank hook and not a short shank. So an Aki or an SL12S works pretty well for this overall. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna place our thread down onto the, onto the hook. I do not throw a uh, base layer of thread the whole way down on this fly. I just put a little bit towards, starting at about the point of the hook, towards the rear end portion of this fly. I do wanna leave exposed shank to the front of this hook. Uh, there's no real reason to leave that exposed shank to the front. It's just, uh, that's how you do it on a traditional tarpon fly. So we're gonna do it like that. Uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, this does use a rabbit strip for the tail. Now when you work with a rabbit strip, uh, it has this bad habit of fouling and wrapping itself back up around the shank of the, or the bend of the hook uh, when you're casting the fly. And uh, nothing's worse than waiting all day for the perfect shot at a really big fish, only to have your fly foul in mid-cast and land and the fish doesn't want to eat it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a guard on the back bend of this hook and that guard is made out of monofilament. Um, 20, 16, whatever size monofilament, you wanna use something like a hard mono or a fluorocarbon, something relatively stiff. I happen to be using 30 pound fluorocarbon right now. That's not what I usually use. I usually use 20 pound mason hard mono. I just happened to forget that when I came today to tie this fly. So we're gonna use 30 pound fluorocarbon. I'm gonna set this loop and I've just curled it over in my fingers on the back of the shank of the hook. And I wanna make sure that this loop, you can't really see it with the camera, but this loop is hanging out behind the bend of the hook. It needs to protrude beyond the bend of the hook to make sure that that rabbit strip can't easily wrap and loop back around like so. So once I set that into place, there we go. Uh, my set hand has happened to come in and show. Now we can see that piece of monofilament is protruding beyond the bend of the hook. So once you kind of have that in place, just pin it there with your left hand, put a couple wraps on it like so. Make sure that it's sitting nice and even how you want it coming off the back of the hook and then a couple wraps forward. Now I do want this to kind of prop up. I want it to stand up just a little bit off the back of this hook right here. And the reason I want it to stand up like so is when I strip this fly through the water, the tail of the rabbit is gonna to wanna to pull down, but with the mono picking up and being rigid, it's gonna make the whole thing kind of bounce and swim a lot in the water. So after I put a couple wraps coming forward, I'm gonna do wraps back up underneath the piece of mono, a couple wraps forward, back up underneath the piece of mono, again, again. And like so, and I'm gonna keep doing that until I can get that piece of monofilament. What happened there? Something went awry. Until I can get that piece of monofilament to jack on up for me, like so. And you can usually pick it up, and there it should go. Stage hand, can I get my backdrop? There you go, you see that's kind of popping up and protruding forward just a little bit. You want it to sit about as flush and even as is humanly possible, but it never comes out quite perfect. So once you've got that tied on, I'm gonna wrap forward. I do wanna have a little bit of a bump in place from this monofilament, and you'll see why that kind of comes into play uh, as we go further on into the fly. Once I've got that done, I'm gonna pick up the excess pieces of the mono guard to the forward and clip it off, and then that's done. Uh, we're going to set down a little bit of glue on this to make sure that this also isn't going to go anywhere. I use head cement, Backcountry Laboratories, hard as hull. Uh, if you saw my prior video, they don't pay me to say that. That's just my favorite head cement. Uh, it's very strong. It does a really good job of penetrating down into the uh, thread. And uh, it's not volatile. So I can put down this stuff into place and I can still work with it. If I use super glue in this situation, I'd have to wait until that glue dried entirely before I tried to go and continue working forward with this fly. You don't always have the time to do that, especially if you're not trying, or especially not if you're trying to tie a bunch of these flies at a single time. So, uh, this is the rabbit strip I'm using. This happens to be Texas cut 
rabbit strip. All right, uh, Magnum Cut works very well in most situations. Uh, because this is on a bigger hook, a 2.0, and uh, the Magnum Cut that was available to me at the fly shop on, the, on this particular day uh, wasn't very fluffy, so I went with the Texas Cut. It's a wider strip of leather on the bottom than a Magnum Cut is. Uh, it, it does have a little bit more splat when it hits the water, which makes it not always the most perfect thing for it, but you do want to have some body to the, to the tail portion of the fly in this situation. Um, I'm going to position this piece of rabbit strip onto the hook, so that way it's going to sit back about the length of the hook shank plus another half. I don't want it to be too, too long. I don't want this fly to be huge, but I also don't want it to be super, super small. So once I set that into place, I'm going to put that down, put a wrap or so of thread over it, kind of wiggle that rabbit strip around, make sure that it's sitting on the hook the way that I actually want it, and then wrap forward and lock it down into place. Um, coming to the forward portion of where I had that piece of mono there. So now we've got that set in place. And also because I wrapped over the top of that wet uh, head cement, that's gonna make sure that that rabbit strip does not go anywhere once this fly hits the water. So now the next portion of this fly, we're gonna make the collar for it. The collar of this fly is gonna consist of hackle. I'm using bag saddle and then neck off of a, uh, a rooster neck. I have one that is black, one that is purple. All right, this is a black and purple fly. So using two different colors of hackle, two hackles total on the collar, you get this nice layered blended look. Uh, if you've never done this sort of thing before or worked with this stuff, the fluffy portion of the feather at the bottom we don't want that. All right? The stuff that looks like marabou but only shorter, that's not what we want. We want the straight webby stuff on this. So I'm going to find where the fluffy stuff stops on the fly. I'm going to get to that, or on the, on the feather, I'm going to get to that point and I'm going to just strip it off, leaving the exposed quill of the feather itself in place. Once you've stripped that off, we're going to trim it. So I have just some tips there to work with and tie into place so it doesn't make too big and nasty a bump when I tie into place. So, set those down on there, wrap them down, and I'm gonna come forward with this just to the end of the bump that I had from where I tied in my mono guard and my rabbit strip. Uh, and then from there, I'm gonna throw a couple half hitches and a whip finish, so that way as I go to wrap, I'm bumping the camera as I whip finish because I have a sloppy whip, and Crazy. Bingo. I got that set into place and now my thread won't track forward as I palmer these hackles into place. Uh, when I go to palmer these hackles down, uh, I want them to flare out. So I'm going to pull these things up, strip it all down to kind of fluff it all out, separate all the individual fibers that you have there. It's going to look a little sloppy at first, but that's fine because we're going to wrap it all down into place. Pull those web fibers back and wrap around coming forward every time you wrap. Uh, using two pieces of, uh, or two individual feathers or hackles instead of just one in this situation also allows you to get a, a very dense, bushy collar that's gonna push a lot of water. It's gonna profile down a little bit and make this nice uh, overall tapered out bait fish shape once it's all said and done. So we're gonna wrap that down, coming on forward to there and we're just about to the front of that bump where we had tied in the mono guard originally. So once I get to there, I'm gonna pin those feather tips down so they don't go anywhere. Put a loose wrap around, another wrap to hold them in place. And now we can kinda crank it down and make sure they don't go anywhere. Those remaining tips, you can cut them off or if you do it just right, you can just kinda pull them off into place and it traps everything down. So now we're gonna put on the final piece of this fly. The final piece of this fly is going to be the head. The head of this fly consists of Estaz Grande. Estaz Grande is a flashy, um, well it's just like Estaz or Chenille except it's really, really bushy. Um, if you were tying this fly a whole lot smaller, on a smaller hook, you would use standard Estaz or Opalescent Estaz. Opalescent stuff is uh, uh, what has that kind of greenish flash and tint to the curl of it. So I've stripped off some of the flashy bulky stuff on the Estaz Grande for the tip piece where I'm going to tie it in tie it in, wrap it down in place so it's not going to come out on you as you go to Palmer. I'm going to throw down a half hitch or two to keep my thread from tracking forward on me. Just like so. Poke yourself in the tip of the finger with the hook. 
Uh, if you're not bleeding after tying a bunch of flies, you're not doing it right. Um, either that or you've gotten so good that you should uh, probably just stop. And we're gonna polymer this into place as well. Wrap it around, coming forward. The reason that I wanted to have that bump of monofilament, I said you'd notice it, or I pointed out as we got into it a little bit later, as I wrap down this Estes Grande, I don't want it to really push down on my hackle. Uh, so I'm actually wrapping this Estes Grande down onto the bare shank of the hook, whereas everything else that I wrapped into place on this fly was sitting on top of that remaining portion of a uh, monofilament that was there. Uh, that keeps the Estes Grande as you palm it into place from pinning down your hackles and affecting the profile of the fly. So we got about two or three good wraps of the Estes Grande. Pull that back, trap that stuff down into place, give it a tug, helps to kind of clean it up. Like so, don't break your thread while you do it, especially not if you're shooting a video. Trim off the front piece right there, and then we're gonna clean this fly up and finish off the head with a nice little bump of black mono. Uh, traditional tarpon flies always seem to have this little head of monofilament on there. I don't know why or where it really started, but that's the look. So that's what we're going to do with this fly too. Get a bunch of wraps in there. We're going to make sure that we cover up any excess estaz that may have gotten into place there and make it nice and clean and pretty like so. Uh, after you've done that, we're going to do a whip finish again to complete the fly. One, two, Set that down in there, cut off the excess, and then that fly is essentially finished. We're gonna finish it off with a little bit of head cement to make sure that this doesn't go anywhere. All right, so that's our finished product on the fly overall right there. You can see it's a really basic fly overall. It consists of just a tail, a collar of hackle, and a head of Estaz, and then a, a final little nose of our thread. We use black in this case. Um, the finished fly uh, throws very, very easily. Rabbit does get a little bit wet as it waterlogs, but overall the fly is not very bulky and tall, so it casts quite easily as long as we're using, um, you know, in the size of this fly, an eight weight or up. A seven weight would be a little bit small for it. That concludes our video. Please continue to watch my videos, like my pictures on Instagram, no matter how petty I feel saying that. It does make me smile when you do that. And please keep buying your flies from me if you're not going to tie them yourselves. Thank you. Enjoy. Enjoy.